Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Takuya. You're awesome. Let's give Takuya a round of applause. Awesome. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, so good to see you all. And uh, if you're down here... Happy as... Alana's not the only one with a birthday, you know. So um, if you're giving 30 bucks to Alana because she's 30, I'm 75. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, praise God. So if you want to mark on that offering card, Pastor Ben's birthday. Um, no, just kidding. Anyway, so uh, good to see you. If you're down here on holiday, that's awesome. Welcome to King's. And uh, I hope you're having a great time down here. And, uh, and I think it's great when you're on holidays uh, to come to church. I think it's awesome. So if you've got your Bibles, uh, turn with me uh, to the letter of 3 John, Third John. Uh, it's uh, one of the letters down towards the end of the Bible. Uh, Third John, and I'm going to read a really famous verse uh, from the Scripture, and it's 3 John uh, verse 2. 3 John verse 2, and I'm going to read it from the old King James Version of the Bible, and so I'm so, sure some of you old-timers are like, right, about time. Uh, so 3 John uh, verse 2, uh, and it says this, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. I'll read that again. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. The title of my message today is, Ah, that was a great year. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your word. I just ask and pray that you would help us to recalibrate, Lord, refocus and refire, ready for 2019. I thank you and I praise you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I love this time of year. It's a great time of year. It's the kind of, this week is the week where you forget what day it is. Uh, yesterday I was down the beach and I thought it was Friday and then I had a little mini heart attack because then I realised it was Saturday uh, and then today I had to preach. I thought, oh, I better come up with something. And uh, no, <laughs> actually I'd already had something organised. Um, but yeah, so it's like that time of the year where we just kind of stop, we cease, uh, we just chill out, we hang out with family, if family are around and it's a really great time of year. It's also a great time of year to recalibrate. Uh, and what that means is to get some things back in order into our lives ready for 2019. Who knows that at the start of each year we come up with some great intentions, some focuses and emphasis that we want to have for that year. But who knows that sometimes over the course of the year we can actually drift away from those intentions. Uh, some of you would have been at the beach this week and, fly, uh, and swimming in between the flags. And one of the things I've noticed about living here is that sometimes there's a bit of a sweep. Uh, and what that means is that you can go and go out into the ocean and then the actual current takes you away from where you originally came. And so there are times when you're out there swimming, you turn around and you realise you've drifted away uh, from the flags. Uh, you went out there in the middle of the flags, but then you eventually uh, drifted away. Some people I've even seen, uh, seen in these holidays get caught in a rip. Uh, and what that means is they get caught in this current and it takes them away from where they were and the best way to get out of a rip is just to let it take you out and then you just swim back across to where you were and then come back in. Who knows that sometimes in life a year can be like that. We can start off with the best of intentions that then at the end of the year we turn around and realise we're no longer between the flags. That actually we've drifted away from some of the goals that we'd set for that year and from some of the emphases. Today I want to talk about a number of things that we should have focus on we should make a priority for this year so that at the end of 2019 we can sit back, maybe it's down at Corumban Beach or wherever you're going and uh, you can sit back, crack a ginger beer and sit back and say, ah, that was a great year. The reason why I'm taking my verse from 3 John 2 is it's written by the Apostle John and he was the oldest living apostle. Many of the apostles, the disciples of Christ actually died earlier or um, in their life but John actually lived to a ripe old age and a Around this time, he was probably around the age of 90 when he actually wrote this. Who knows when you get to the age of 90, you get a different perspective on life than what you did when you were 30. And there are some things you thought were important when you were 30 that when you were at 90, you realised they actually weren't that important at all. And here he writes one of the most famous verses on the Bible and he actually says, I wish above all things. So when a 90-year-old person saying, I wish above all things, it's probably correct. It's probably something that's probably got their priorities in order. And he says, I wish above all things that you prosper, 
be in health even as your soul prospers. And here he writes a number of things, a number of priorities that he thinks are eternally important. And here are some things that for us, that we can actually have a focus on, that we can prioritise and we can try and focus on this year. So when we look back at the end of the year, we can look at it and say, ah, that was a great year. So I want to talk to you today about five priorities that all of us can have to have a fulfilling year um, in 2019. The first one is this. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Prosper. Now that word prosper in the Greek language, which is what this was written in, is the word euodou, E-U-O-D-O-O. And it means to help on the road or succeed in reaching. It's an ongoing progressing state of success and well-being. So what he's saying is, I pray that this year that you will continue to succeed or be on the journey towards success. So the first priority this year is number one, succeed, succeed. What that means is this, that we can actually succeed in areas where we're currently failing that we can actually succeed in areas where maybe we've actually been failing for a long time. I'm a big big believer that God wants to give us victory in our defeated places, that there are areas of our life that might be in defeat. It might be in your workplace. It might be at home. It might be in your finances. It might be in a different area of your life. And I'm a big believer that God actually wants wants us to succeed in all those areas. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 15, God says to Abraham, he says, look to the north, the south, the east, and the west, all the land that you see, I've given you. What is he saying? He's saying, I'm going to give you victory on every side. That on every side of your life, I actually want to give you victory. I believe that there are some areas of our lives that have been in defeat for so long that we just give in to it and we just put up with it. But who knows that there's times like this at this time of year, we can look at some areas and say, you know what, I've been putting up with that for too long. I'm going to believe God for victory in some of my defeated places. I'm a big believer that God wants to give us victory on every side. Maybe there's an area of your life that's been in defeat for a long time. That doesn't mean you can't get victory in it. Here is a 90-year-old man and he says, I pray above all things that you prosper, that you succeed in those areas, even in areas where you are actually currently failing. A number of years ago, I read this book called God's generals and it was written about a number of the heroes of the faith from the late 1800s to the early 1900s and very well known heroes of the faith people like Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Semple McPherson, Maria Woodworth Etta and that sort of thing and there was a man uh, that they had a chapter written about him in this book and his name was John G. Lake. John G. Lake was a man that actually went over to Africa and had a phenomenal healing ministry and saw an incredible amount of healings and he saw incredible miracles of provision and he's known as one of the great heroes of the faith in modern times and he was and he's really well known for having a very very successful ministry. When he went over to Africa his ministry was so successful that he got incredibly busy to the point that he actually neglected all the other areas of his life. At the time, he was married with a young family, but he was completely neglectful towards them. And people were always coming to him for ministry, always coming to receive healing from God. And so he had what, would we, what we would consider a very successful ministry, but other areas of his life were actually falling apart. And one of the areas of his life that was falling apart was actually his family, to the point that he had a completely dysfunctional relationship with his children. And his wife... Um, was so unwell, she was so constantly serving others that literally one day she just simply dropped dead and died from overwork and from exhaustion. Um, Eventually, he remarried and he realised the way he conducted his life and ministry before was unbalanced and wasn't right. So when he got remarried, he actually put a lot more focus on his marriage and when they had more children, he had spent a lot more time with his children. He realised that just because he, because he had a successful ministry, it didn't mean he should put up with failure actually in his family. And he realised later on that God actually wants to give him victory on every side, not just in his ministry, but also in his family as well. Maybe you're here and you have some areas of your life that are going really well and are incredibly, incredibly successful. I'm here to let you know that even in spite of that, God wants to give you victory in your defeated places. And I felt God say that for 2019, there are some people here 
where you are going to experience victory in areas where you've had long-term defeat, that you've got an area of defeat in your life that you have not experienced victory in for a long time, but in 2019, God wants to give you victory on every side. A 90-year-old man says, I pray above all things that you prosper, which was meaning, which was meaning a continual being of success. The second thing that he says is this. He said, above, uh, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, and be in health, be in health. It's funny, in the New Testament, they didn't talk about, it does not a lot of teaching on living a healthy lifestyle. There's a lot of talk about healing. So when people needed healing, they would receive divine healing. But it didn't talk a lot about having a healthy and balanced lifestyle. And the reason was because they didn't need it that much. I mean, they didn't actually have McDonald's back then. They didn't have Krispy Kremes. They didn't have fast food. They didn't have cars, so they walked around a lot. So in general, um, you know, they were probably um, had a reasonable level of health. And then when they would have some kind of infirmity or sickness and disease, they would need divine healing, and, very, and Jesus Christ would heal all who actually came to him. So it doesn't talk a lot, actually, about divine health. But who knows that for our society, that is something that is actually really applicable uh, for us. Interestingly, he says, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health. So what that means is our health actually needs to be a priority for every single one of us. Now, this is a really bad time to think about it. Uh, maybe you've had a really big, big week with lots of family do's. I don't know about you, but there was a couple of days there. I was so full, I felt like a python that ate a puppy. And so I just <laughs> it's at those times you get a little bit wistful and start thinking about health and fitness <laughs> and that sort of thing. But who knows that in our society, our health is something that's really important. There's a, a pastor I know, his name is Pastor Michael Murphy, and many years ago was quite, um, quite overweight and quite unhealthy. Uh, and he received a prophecy from a prophet. And the prophecy was your life expectancy, your, sorry, your destiny is longer than your life expectancy. And basically saying God has got more for you than what your body is going to be willing to handle. And God wants us to be people who are vital, who have a level of health. And who knows it's at this time of year that it's a time for us to start recalibrating and getting that sort of stuff in order. Maybe you've had a year like me. I've had a crazy year when it comes to fitness and income and health. And when I say crazy, what I mean is really, really bad. Um, and obviously the first year taking over a new church, there's just so much to do. You just head down and, and kind of just making things things happen and you do some really long hours and there are times when you start dropping the ball in terms of your health and fitness but even then God's been challenging me again really recently that that sort of thing now that we you know now that things are pretty well in order I need to get that sort of area of my life in order as well just found out recently that I've got a herniated disc in my back and so it's really affected my exercise can't exercise my way out of trouble anymore uh, like I could when I was younger so I'm gonna have to do something which is really foreign to me which is starting to watch what I eat and um, when you're half Tongan, that's not a normal thing to do. And so, and that sort of thing. But I know for myself and for Trisha as well, for us, getting our health in order is actually a priority for us. This is a good, maybe you're here and that is something that you thought, I always meant to do that. I always meant to get my health in order. Don't wait another 12 months, look back and say, I wish I had have done that. Now is the time to set your schedules. Now is the time to get those things in order so that at the end of the year, you can be as vital as you've been for a long time and you can look back and you can say, ah, that was a great year. The next thing uh, that he says, he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou must prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So he wants us to have a prosperous soul, not just a prosperous body and not just success in areas of our life, but actually that we would have a prosperous soul. The third priority that we should make so that we can have a fulfilling year is number three, that we should exercise spiritually. Exercise spiritually. It's useless to do all these other things if spiritually, if we're flat and if we're defeated and we've wandered away from the things of God. That as people, we need to make sure that our spiritual life uh, is in order as well. Now, you can actually exercise yourself spiritually. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4 verse 8, the Apostle Paul says, For physical training is of some value, but godliness is value for all things holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. In the Good News Bible, it actually says this, physical exercise is some value, but spiritual exercise is valuable in every way. So what that means is that as a Christian, that we should make sure that we exercise spiritually. 
So how do we do that? Well, for many of you would know this, but first of all, there's our personal time with God. We're on a daily basis that we spend time in prayer and spend time reading God's word. We can feed from him and spend time in his presence. That can nourish us on a daily basis. But not only that, God has created us to meet corporately as well. And so on a weekly basis, as we come together to church, there's something that we get in that place. There's a faith, there's a strength, there's a vitality that we get by getting together with God's people, getting under his word and getting together and worshipping God. But there's also another thing that's important for us, and that's also that we spend time in more compressed time through the year, spending time set aside to go and seek him and spend more time with him. They're actually we're designed for that as well. In the Old Testament, that they, the, uh, the Jews would have a number of feasts a year. And they were the equivalent of conferences where they would go and spend time together and spend time in God's presence and God would use that to fuel them and to strengthen them for what he actually had for them. In the same way for us, it's important that not only do we have a daily time with God, that we also have a weekly time together with God's people, but there are other times that we have set aside where we can go a little bit deeper as well. That's why in 2019, we've going to schedule a couple of things that's going to help us as a church to take that to another level. In March, we're actually going to have a men's summit. So what that is, is like a day conference and we're going to do some activities and hang out, but we're also going to be getting under God's word and we're going to be spending time worshipping God together as men. And that's a time we can set aside, one day in March. Some of you might say, well, what can happen in one day? Well, it's incredible what God can do in one day. Bible says better is one day in his courts than a thousand anywhere else. You know what that means? It means he can undo three years worth of damage in one day. It can give you a few years worth of vision in one day. It's incredible what he can do. And so we're going to do that in March. And then in term two, we're going to do what we did last year, which was 21 days of breakthrough. Three weeks of prayer and fasting, prayer meetings every night, finishing with a Holy Spirit encounter. That three weeks of just seeking God, spending time in him, that will rejuvenate us and refire us and strengthen us and exercise us spiritually. Then in term three, we're going to do a thing called Hot August Nights. And no, it's not a Neil Diamond album. And Hot August Nights will be, basically, we're going to have four nights and we're going to have four different guest speakers and we're going to do it in here. And we're going to spend time, you know, just having that extra time, not just on Sunday, but coming in those nights. We'll do dinner beforehand and that sort of thing. And we will come together as a church and we will encounter God together as a group uh, once again. At that time, we'll also do a young adult summit. At that time, we'll also do a senior summit. Uh, And so for people like myself, who was 75 and, and we'll do those and that's and that's something that we all need to get to continue to strengthen and then in term four we're also going to do a women's conference and that's going to be put on in October in term four and all these things I encourage you to consider setting aside time that you can exercise spiritually where God can propel your spiritual life to another level the amount of people I know that God has spoken to them at a camp God has done something powerful at a conference when you set aside that extra time and exercise yourself spiritually there are even some people who have considered it to even take it to another level level who are doing what we call internships. So we've got a number of people who are doing an internship. They're doing Bible college in Brisbane. They're going to come and volunteer and serve at church on Sundays and also one day during the week. And it's a time that they're setting aside for God to propel their life to another level. If I can look back at the times where God just propelled me, where my soul prospered even more greatly, it was very often at times like that, at camps and conferences and internships and that sort of thing, exercising myself spiritually. And it gave me great fulfillment and satisfaction and personal growth. He here is saying that we need to make sure that not only are we in health, but we also that our soul prospers. I know that for some of you, and I really experienced that firsthand this year, we have a number of staff people here who are staff members at our school. And I learnt this year, people were always saying to me that November at King's College is crazy. I did not fully understand what that meant until this year in 2018. And I know that for our teachers and our admin staff, they're long days and, and I'm sure some of you may have at that time spent, um, you know, maybe some of your devotional life drifted off, your time alone with God has drifted off, but I'm just here to let you know that God wants you to be able to set aside that time and spend it with him. Let's stretch your hands and pray.
stretch your hands towards him. We're going to minister to him outside. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you for your liberty. We thank you for breakthrough at the end of 2018. We're going to crown the year with your goodness. We thank you and praise you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The fourth thing that he says is this. 3 John 4. He says, I have no greater joy than to hear my children are walking in the truth. So here is this man in his 90s and he says, I have no greater joy than to hear my children actually walking in the truth. He's actually not talking about his natural children. He's actually talking about his spiritual children. He's actually talking about people who are, who've actually, he's actually led to faith or he's actually discipled. And he's saying, I have no greater joy. Now, you need to understand something about John. John was actually someone who had, uh, who had performed miracles with Jesus Christ. He'd been with Jesus for three and a half years and he performed a great deal of miracles. And yet here he is, he says, I have no greater joy than hearing that my children are actually walking in the truth. What is he saying? One of the greatest joys that you can have is seeing people come to know Christ. So the fourth thing that we need to do, the fourth priority we should make, is that we should share our faith and be willing to win souls for Christ this year. It's funny, it seems like every time I get up, I'm talking about sharing our faith and winning souls. But I just feel that for some of us, there's another level to our Christian walk. Many of us love God and we love his word and we love his presence and God's done so many good things in our life. But the bottom line is that there's something even greater and that's seeing other people come to know him. Now, there are some people who are naturally good at it and naturally good at leading people to Christ. You know, I knew one guy and he used to lead people to Christ on aeroplanes and he used to really intimidate me and put me off because I thought, well, he's just really good at it. But one of the things I've learned is this, that God can actually use every single one of us to see people come to know Christ, to see souls won, to see people come to know him. And I believe that for some people here, 2019 is going to be a year where you're going to see God move through you to see other people come to know him, that you're going to see people come to know Christ through your witness. Just like last week when I talked about how we live through this life and we need to be open and available for people to come to know Christ. In the same way, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're going or what you've been through, as you go along through this life, we just need to be open to Christ to allow him to use us. And I believe for some people here, God's going to give you a new level of boldness. He's going to give you a new level of opportunity that for some people who have never seen someone come to know Christ, that 2019 can be that year. And even if you've had a difficult year in many other areas, if you've seen some people come to know Christ, you can look back at the end of this year and say, Ah, that was a great year. And the last thing, the last priority we should have this year, it's interesting, you know, in 3 John 14, the Apostle John says, I hope to see you soon and we will talk face to face. So here is this 90-year-old man and he is saying, I'd love to come and hang out with you. John, 3 John is one of the shortest letters in the entire Bible. It's one chapter long. Yet six times he actually mentions the word friends. A 90-year-old man talking about his friends. I would have thought most of them were dead. But here he is and he's actually talking about his friends and the joy and the satisfaction he has from having friends. The fifth thing that we should do as we look back on the, at the end of the year is spend time socially with other people and spend time with friends. Who knows that sometimes you can get so busy that we neglect that area of our life. But there's a fuel that God has for us where socially, when we interact with other people, that actually it fuels us and enables us to live the victorious Christian life that God actually has for us. When I started out in ministry, I nearly had a burnout in the first two years of ministry many years ago. And the reason was that I didn't have a day off. And so uh, I was working Monday to Friday at the church. Sunday was a full day, but it wasn't a paid working day, and so I was just there the whole day. And then the youth group I took over, the youth group used to meet on Saturdays. And so I had youth on Saturday night and was preparing for it on Saturday. So I was working seven days a week. And I started just having no energy. After about 18 months, I went to the doctor and I said, Doc, I don't know what's, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. You know, I've picked up a bug or something. And the doctor did tests and said, we can't find anything wrong. He said, write out your schedule. And I wrote out my schedule. 
And he said, well, there's your problem. You never have a day off. Okay, you, you're just fatigued. And so what we did was we moved youth group from Saturday and moved it over to Friday. And so I had Saturday as a complete day off. And I treated Saturday, it was like my Sabbath. It was a day off. I didn't do anything. I just chilled out. And I found out I started having a lot more energy uh, the, following, you know, the following day for the Sunday. But I would really keep it really sacred. And I'd go to bed like, you know, nine o'clock on a Saturday night. Or people wanted to say, you want to come over? I said, no, I'm resting. And I would just go and spend time. And then one day, one of the young adults in our, uh, in our church said, why don't you come over? There's a group of us. Come over to our place. We're going to have some pizza and we're going to play some card games. And I said, oh, you know, I don't want to. And Trish said, oh, come on. Let's go and do something. We can't just stay home all the time. And I said, well, I'm resting. And she said, no, you know, let's just go out. And I said, okay. And so we went over there and we had a great time. And we're playing this card game. I don't know if you've ever played it. It was a silly card game called Billionaire. And uh, we're playing the game Billionaire and I was getting so frustrated because I was convinced I was the best player, but I kept on losing. Uh, and so we're playing Billionaire and while I'm doing that, I was thinking to me, I was, you know, having a great time and we were laughing and joking. And by the time I looked at my watch, it was 11 o'clock at night, two hours after my bedtime, my rest time. And I thought, oh, I better go home. Uh, and, uh, and they used to call me Cinderella. Um, because I'd turn into a pumpkin at midnight. So I would just go home, and uh, I remember I went home, woke up early the next, and I thought, man, I'm going to be tired tomorrow. I was out late tonight. I woke up the next morning, jumped out of bed, full of energy, full of vitality. I had less sleep than what I've been having, but I was fueled, and I was fueled by the social interaction. Every single one of us needs it. Some of you young adults are sitting there thinking, what are you talking about? I socialise all the time. But when you get older and you realise that time get, get, gets constrained on you with family and with work and all the other things that we do, we need to make sure that we still spend some time making sure we have a bit of a social life because we are fueled by that. How often have we got to this week, look back and said, you know what, I didn't spend any time with that person. I didn't, you know, all these people I was thinking I was going to spend a bit of time with, none of it happened and we get fueled fueled as a result of spending that time with those people. Here's a 90-year-old man mentioning friends six times in this one chapter, knowing at the end of his life that one of the greatest joys in life is having interaction with other people. What is the number one punishment in prison? It's isolation. Spending time by yourself. It's a punishment actually in prison. And how many of us live in our own self-imposed prisons? having no interaction with other people. We need to be people who are willing to spend a little bit of time interacting, socialising. That's why it's good to be part of a small group. You can come to the small group and you get to meet people. That's why it's good to hang around for a cuppa after, after church and talk to people. And Maybe you're saying, that's the only time I can get out and do that. We'll do that on the Sunday. Hang out in the cafe, talk to people, have a coffee, have a chat, get to know other people. And you'll find that when you go home, you'll be fueled with the fuel that you need to carry on that week. And you can look back at the end of the year and say to yourself, I've got no regrets. Ah, that was a great year. Amen. And maybe you're here and you're saying to yourself, Ben, that's nice what you're saying, but you don't know the year that I had. You're talking about going out into the ocean. I got caught in a rip and I don't know when I'm ever going to come back. I felt the Holy Spirit say to me that for some people the tide is turning and then you're going to be able to recalibrate over this next season bring some balance into your life and some order and have some great fulfilment. I also believe that there are some people here that as I was speaking before about victory in your defeated places, that God is going to give you victory in areas where you have been defeated and he's going to give you victory in 2019. There are areas that you've just given up on that you thought I'm never going to get victory there, but you'll be amazed at what can happen in 2019. God can give you victory, amen. And so maybe you're in, your, in this place and you're one, in one of those two categories. Can I just ask everyone, just close their eyes and bow their heads for a moment. And maybe you're in this place and you're saying, Ben, that's me. This year, my circumstances caved in on me. I got caught in a rip and I need to bring back some order to my life this year. I felt God say the tide is turning for you. The season's changing. If that is you right where you are, slip up your hand and say, that's me. I drifted away from my purpose. I drifted away from what was important. Circumstances pulled me away. If that is you, just slip up your hand nice and high. There's a number of you there. It's a breakthrough time for you. 2019, the current is turning in your direction. Awesome, you can put your hands down. 
Secondly, maybe you're here, and as I was speaking, God was reminding you of an area of defeat that you've had for a long time, and hope was rising in your heart, believing that next year I'm going to get breakthrough in that. If that is you, you're believing for victory in that defeated place, right where you are, slip up your hand and say, that's me this morning. I'm believing for victory in that defeated place. Victory in that defeated place. Awesome, many hands. It's a breakthrough time. It's a breakthrough time. You can put your hands down. And finally, maybe you're here and you're visiting today and you haven't got a relationship with Jesus Christ. All these principles I gave you are healthy and they're good, but without a relationship with Christ, they're they're void, they're null and void. And maybe you're here the number, and you've never given your life to Christ. The number one priority you need to make is giving your life to Jesus Christ. When we make him number one in our life, it's incredible what he does. It means you get a ticket to heaven after you die. It means it settles your eternity. He has a plan and purpose for your life and he opens up your destiny. Being a Christian is the best of both worlds. You get settles your eternity and it opens up your destiny. And maybe you're here and you haven't given your life to Christ, but you want to. With every eye closed and every, every, eye closed and every head bowed, if that's you today, just want you to slip up your hand and say, that's me. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to have a relationship with God. I want to give my life to Him. I'm going to crown the year with His goodness in 2018. If that is you, right where you are, slip up your hand and say, that's me this morning. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to have a relationship with God. Relationship with God. Church, you can open your eyes. If you put your hand up and you said, I felt like I was caught in a spiritual rip this year or I'm believing for victory in a defeated place, right where you are, could you stand to your feet right now? Just stand to your feet right where you are if that's you. There was heaps of you. It's okay. You're not by yourself. It's all good. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, I prophesy over these people standing. Those that were caught, dragged away from that which was important by circumstance. I thank you, Lord, the tide is turning. The current is changing and they're getting swept back into your flow, into your will. I thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. There's not much they could do to change it, but Lord, I thank you, you're changing that right now. And I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. And I also pray for those, Lord, who are believing for victory in that defeated place. I pray may 2019 be the year, Lord God, where they get victory in that defeated area. So many other areas of their life, Lord, they're experiencing success. But I pray, Father, in 2019, may they receive victory in that defeated place, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you for it, Father, in Jesus' name.